Hey folks, Dan Freer here with your real estate update for February 5th, 2024. What we're going to talk about in today's event is how government spending, reckless spending, is going to make rates go over 7%. So my name is Dan Freer. I do this report on a daily basis. I'm a mortgage advisor licensed in all 50 states as well as Puerto Rico. So if you're out there and you're looking to maybe buy a house in 2024, we'd love to help you out. So without further ado, let's get over to it. This week is action packed when it comes to me finding people to help you guys with your economic, uh, I'll say, knowledge with all this. So today we have a special guest, Jaspreet Singh. He's the founder and owner of Minority Mindset. It's a fantastic show. This is where I learn a lot when it comes to the economic landscape. I have a degree in economics, but Jaspreet puts this in just simple, it's in the simplest terms. I've been following him for years and he kind of is my mentor when it comes to the economic piece of the puzzle and actually how he presents it to the public. So uh, Jaspreet's joined us today. He's got over 1.8 million subscribers. Love his channel and he's he's kind enough to come back uh, to us to, to do an interview and help us with our 2024 forecast. And then the next thing we have is um, Altos Research. Now Altos Research, this is the probably the number one site that people or especially realtors use when they're trying to figure out the market values in your local area. So what we focus on a daily basis is I want you to concentrate on where you're living. If you're living in, let's say, Maine, do you really care what California is doing because it's not relevant in your area. So that's what I want you guys to focus in on. And Altos Research is just that product for you guys to do because you can specify all the way down to the city that you live in. So without further ado, let's get to it. Got some bad news for you folks. Rates spiked about a quarter percent across the board on Friday and you're going to see it spike as well today. And we will have rates over 7% once again. What's behind all this context? Well, let's go to the economic calendar to see what's out today. The only thing out today really is uh, the PMI indexes. We have the services PMI, manufacturing PMI, and manufacturing prices. Okay, so what you, what you need to understand with this is how robust is manufacturing right now and what's happening to its prices. Because the federal government, and well, I'll take that back, the Federal Reserve wants the, the economy to start to cool down. So they want basically wages to cool down, people to stop spending, Unfortunately, this is contrarian to that. So you have the servicing sector. Uh, previous reading was 51. It upticked to 52. Not a big thing. But on the manufacturing side, look at this. Last reading was 50. Supposed to go to 52. Went to 53. Now here's the price point that's really concerning right now. Prices on this was 57 previously. Sorry, I got a green screen behind me. It's supposed to downtick a little bit to 56. It, it upticked over seven points to 64. So that means prices are going up. We're manufacturing more stuff. And this is in is what the, the Federal uh, Reserve is basically saying they don't want to happen. So you're starting to see reactions in the market right now that it doesn't like. See, the Dow Jones is down 200 points. Why? Well, Chairman Powell, he runs the Federal Reserve, said there will not be basically any price cuts or any interest rates cuts in March. And the markets overall don't like that. The Dow Jones is down over 300 points. NASDAQ gave up 113 so far today. But let's get over to the reckless spending that we have, especially from the federal government. So should we be worried about America's debt? Time to reconsider. Well, here's our national debt. And you can see this thing is going like crazy. This just a month ago was 33. So it is ticking and ticking. That's our national debt. Okay. What creates national debt? Well, how does the government, first off, how does the government create money? They don't have really jobs to, to bring in the revenue. There's no, like the government works for this entity to bring in revenue. How do they do it? Well, taxes. Okay. So think of it this way. The only way the government makes money or brings in money is through taxes. However, when they start giving it away, um, well, here, let's first off look at this way. How much interest is it costing us to run the national debt? Well, it's 40% of all the tax money being pr taken in right now. It was 30% last year. It was, it was less than that two, three years ago. So what's going on? Well, the, the reckless spending. And now I'm going to put this into context. I know Israel needs help. I know Ukraine needs help. I know uh, we need border security. I know student loan debt is running out of control right here. 
Student loan debts, the forgiveness of this is gonna cost the country 426 billion. You have right here, 118 billion just announced yesterday to fight these other things. So you have 500 billion in just these two entities right there here. The thing that even ticks me off more is there's no accountability for half this stuff. More than a billion dollars in military aid to Ukraine can't even be found. So the government in itself just has, it's running irrational. It's giving money away that it doesn't have, okay? So if, if you had, for example, if you had a debt that you had to pay, it was a really important debt that you had to pay, okay? What do you have to do as a household? Well, I got to cut somewhere. Well, these politicians don't want to cut anywhere because whatever politician or whatever group's in charge at that time, if they cut, they're out of favor with everybody. So they just keep giving money, giving money to student loans, giving money to this, giving money to that. But you have to cut it somewhere. There's a lot of fat in areas. They just don't cut it because they don't want to because then it affects them being reelected. So this is a lot of context, and this is what we're going to go over to in today's video uh, with Jaspreet. So based on really this, this minor information that we have today, what's happening in the the markets, the markets are getting hammered too. Okay. What's happening is like I said, you saw in the stock market, the stock market doesn't like this. Dow Jones is almost down 400 points. Then you go over to the bond market and they're getting hammered too. Why? Government irresponsibility. So what you're seeing right here is this is what I track on a daily basis. I'm a mortgage advisor licensed in all 50 states. I need to keep up on what, what in the heck's going on with interest rates, mortgage programs, helping educate people if they're looking to buy a house in 2024. So I follow this right here. This is is a mortgage-backed security that trades on Wall Street. The yield on this thing makes up basically the most pieces of the puzzle when it comes to your mortgage rate. So what we follow here is this. This is the price of the bond. All you need to know is, is this fundamental fact in any bond. If the price is going down, the price of the bond's going down, that means rates are going up. We could see just not too long ago in October, we were, let me see if I can go a little bit farther out. In October, what you're seeing right through here, this is when rates hit 8%. Okay, this was the high, the 52 week high that we had right here. It's 8.03%. What's happened since then? We can see the prices have gone up and up and up to that point. Okay, what, what was that point? Well, that point was where basically when rates were six point, I'm gonna say about 6.3. Okay, what's happened since then? Well, we've had a downturn. So the, the price is going down, pushing up rates to where we are today, 692. This adjustment's minus 33. So basically it's saying rates are gonna go up from where we are now. So we are going to see rates at 7% today. So that's your context to, for today is what's going on with mortgage rates. So if you're out there and you're like, hey, Dan, I, I'd really like to buy a house in 2024, but I just don't know if I qualify. We'd, well, we'd love to help you. Again, my name is Dan Freo. I do this report on a daily basis. I, I, I basically, I'm a, I won't say basically, I'm a mortgage advisor licensed in all 50 states as well as Puerto Rico, and I'd love to help you. So all you need to do is go to our website, The Rate Update. Here's a bunch of information that you can use up through here. But if you really need to see, you know, can I qualify for a house this year? My first house, maybe my first investment property, or could it, would it make sense to refinance? That's probably not the case in, in right now, but maybe six months or seven months or 12 months from now, when the Federal Reserve does reduce rates, you might be able to refinance. So those are the things we can help you with. So if that's you, you're out there trying to kick the tires, do you qualify for any type of loan? Well, do me a favor, do, if you wanna apply with us, hit the apply now button. What it's gonna do is something a little bit unique than most other systems do. You're gonna put in an app application, you're not going to really put in an application. You're going to ask a few, get asked a few questions. Based on the answers to those questions, I'm going to assign you to a mortgage specialist that specializes in exactly what you're looking for. If you'd rather call in or email me directly, all you need to do is scroll down to the bottom of this website and you're going to see just that, our 800 number and my email address. So all I got to ask you to do is if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do that. And it's, the link is right down over there. Other than that, hope to see you later today with our interview with Jaspreet Singh. Have a fantastic day, folks. I'll see you here later today. Bye-bye.